Mainstream media exists for the purposes of indoctrination and manipulation of public perception. The world of free and independent media is growing, and with the upsurge in information now available in the public domain, it has never been easier to access free and independent media. The exploration of this information resulted in an experimental project which would provide a fully supported space for researchers, whistleblowers and seekers of all kinds to express themselves and educate the world. On the 1st of January 2015, Conscious Consumer Network was launched to the world. Nobody thought we would make it this far. But CCN is the longest running free and independent media network of its kind. CCN is a unique collaboration of hearts and souls, bringing you information from different perspectives to educate and inform. Since we started CCN, we have had only one desire, the pursuit of a free, fair, just, sustainable world. And this has not changed. Having overcome many challenges over the last two years, CCN is here to stay and we've got great things lined up for 2017. It's all it's right all to right. be just, just a little bit crazy. Being, being creative, creative is being, being a, little a little bit crazy, crazy in just the right vibration. With that, With that in mind, mind, you should you understand, understand God's, God's completely God. insane. <laughs> An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on, too. It's, it's an, an idea. idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. It's a genuine expression. A certain Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, we egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect, George Carlin and Gilbert style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you to be you to the fullest. The driving force of appreciation is humor. So that's all this show is going to be. With the exception of the occasional tiny little bit of uh, seriousness interjected. But yeah, mostly just humor. So um, if you have no sense of humor, prepare to embrace the buttered side of the force. So on that note, here's a little disclaimer for all of the special SJW snowflakes out there that need it. We wake up at the sunrise, then you're staring back at me. I hold on to the moment as we cast it out to sea. And the lights come on, the lights come on, reflecting off your skin. So burning stars are all we are, ignited from within. 
There is nothing more to life than life itself. That's the way I see it now. I see that life is just life. It's just to be. It's just to experience. It's just to laugh and engage each other in wondrous moments of joy and appreciation. There is nothing more. The accumulation of wealth is the illusion. The accumulation of stuff is the distraction. That's the way I see it. It's just a ridiculous side of who we are that keeps us so limited in that physical experience. I couldn't take the redundancy in life any longer. I couldn't take trying to be me, trying to be authentic in a state of consciousness that is in such a state of disarray. That's the way I'll say it, that the integrity of who we are as souls is so lost in our desire to be accepted as human beings that we cannot see through it and we lose ourselves in it and we get lost in it. And I felt it constantly tugging on me. I felt it constantly pulling on me. People begging me, asking me to be something other than what I was and I couldn't give in and I fought it the whole way. I had to be who I knew myself to be, even if it didn't seem to fit in what everybody else said I should be as far as the human being that I shouldn't be. I must say that it's difficult for us, those that know who we are, to exist in a society that is crawling, crawling with people who are so inconsistent with their own authentic nature. I would say that there are so many people lost in the greed, lost illiteracy of the human interpretation of what it means to be alive. I would say that so many of the human beings walking around the earth now are barely alive. That's the way I would say it. I see them as walking zombies. That's how I see you all now. I see you all as lost in logic, which keeps you so far from your heart, from compassion and gratitude and appreciation for life. It's as if you're walking through this human experience without any of the humanness. Why would we limit ourselves in such restrictive ways? I just, I don't understand it. I never understood it and I never could and I never wanted to. I didn't really want to know why you all gave over to this ridiculous, surreal interpretation of what we are capable of being. It just seemed so limited to me. So what else was I to do but make fun of it? to laugh at it and realize that it's all you could do with your fears and your uncertainties. How could you possibly find a more magnificent way of experiencing life? So what am I to say here today? What am I to say to inspire you all to live more fully? How can I be one to inspire? I would say that I want to. I want to be inspirational. I want to say give it the good fight. I want to say give it to all, but I can't. I cannot say that this life created in the way it is now, the way people, human beings are existing, is worth the good fight. It's not. Give up on the way people are living. Give up on that societal and the structure and the limitations that it brings to our innate, expansive nature. I say, walk away from it, turn away from it. In every aspect of your experience, detach from what is, from what everybody else is giving their energy over to. For it's all just keeping you down. Don't try to fit in. Don't try to be a part of this society that treats each other as insignificant. Don't you see the ridiculousness of this? We're supposed to be working towards a common goal and yet we're telling individuals to fight for their individuality, to fight to be above another or better than another. How does humanity not see how ridiculous that is? How can we continue in this direction? I would say that what I'm experiencing is a wave of compassion that is that is blowing me over. I feel it. I feel it to the point where it lifted me beyond my negativity. That's what I would say. And that's a place that not many people thought I'd ever get. I didn't want to be negative. I tried hard to oppose that. 
But my negativity came from my understanding that this isn't the way we were meant to be. That this isn't how we were meant to treat each other. That there had to be more love, there had to be more joy, there had to be more laughter. And when you know something so certainly, in your heart of hearts, when you know it in the deepest core of your beingness, and everybody outside of you is telling you to get serious, to get straight, to straighten up and align with what is already existing in the physical, well, what are you to do, huh? What are you to do with your true nature, with who you really are? How do you keep that down? How do you hold that in? How do you allow anybody else in this human experience to dictate who you should be? I'm not just talking about me, I'm talking to each and every one of you. Don't do it. Don't give up who you truly are to appease some state of being that was defined by somebody else that doesn't know you at all. You can't continue to follow these restrictive ways of living because some intellectually inclined human egos think they know how people are supposed to be. Resent me mm. toward humanity in the way that it is just giving in to this negative self-destructive way of being. That's what I see. If you're willing to accept what is in this world right now, then you are creating more of the same. That's what I want to say. It's up to you. You're there. You're there right now. If you don't do the work, who's going to? We're here to bring joy. We're bring, here to bring each other a sense of connectedness, oneness, and unity. And I can only do so much as a human being. I gave my effort everywhere that I could. I did what I could with what I had to work with, and that's what I want people to know. It's not so easy on the inside. What you see on the outside is never the full story, people. Never the full story. And I know that. I always knew that. I knew I had to do what I could do. It's something I knew. How do I know that? I don't know. You don't know. You know there are things you know about who you are and what you need to be or do that you don't know how or why. I could give you a million logical reasons why, but I'm not going to. I don't want to justify it or validate any intellectual interpretation of the inclination of my soul. This is what I felt I needed to do as the soul that I was having the experience that I am and of bringing your attention to the pain that's going on in this society because of the rigidity of the structure of this society got to change. There needs to be flexibility. There needs to be freedom for people to be who they know they are here to be, not what everybody else thinks they should be for whatever other reason. This isn't about that. So wake up, people. Don't miss another minute of this glorious experience losing yourself in some e egotistical interpretation of what you think would make you look good to others. Unfortunately, that human aspect of me continually questioned if it was enough. I thought I'd make a bigger wave. I thought I'd have a bigger impact in the direction this society took. I thought I really could change the world. I really thought I could help people find compassion in their hearts and a sense of connection between all human beings. I kept trying and trying to reach people in different ways, in whatever way that I could. And I guess what I wanted was the validation in some human way. Where I could say, well, yeah, I did that. Look, that society changed because of me. I couldn't see it. Oh, yes, now I see it. Now I see it in a big way. I did more than my share. I'll say that now. Isn't it? Isn't it sad that my humanness wouldn't allow me to recognize that? And that humanness that I'm speaking of is the part of me that was inundated with this intellectual interpretation of what it meant to be successful, of what it meant to be appreciated, of what it meant to bring value. Oh, it's all there. It's so inconsistent what we interpret 
as true wealth. I knew I felt it every time I brought joy to somebody. Why couldn't that be enough for the human part of me? I felt it in my soul. I felt the oneness and the unity. It couldn't be enough because logic wouldn't let it. Because there's a pervasive intellectual energy in this society now that is trying desperately to remain in control. To remain the director of the human experience. But what I say is that's not going to be. That they might as well put down their weapons now for they've already lost the battle. What I see now, which is an inclination in the human collective to be free, to be free from this oppressive way of existing that limits our ability to be free. Why is it not serious enough? Why is it not practical enough? Why can't we create a society that allows that to be more than enough? To be all that we need. Why do people have to feel that they have to put their gifts to the side and get serious first and maybe find some spare time to play with their gifts? Why does anyone think that's the way we intended to be here as human beings? I can only say, I can only hope that what I see in the energy is true, that I, what I see in the deeper parts of soul is that desire to change the way we live, to change what we allow to affect how we are, who we are. I can say that it is a wondrous journey, no matter what they say, desire to change the way we live, freedom from being judged as not living the way I'm supposed to be living, as not being who I'm supposed to be being, as not acting on the way I'm supposed to be acting. The freedom that I am exactly who I am, who I meant to be. Compassion, gratitude for the joy I allowed so many to experience. For I see now how little joy there is in this life and how people actually feel that they're not entitled to it. That they're only entitled to tiny little doses of it every once in a while. Well, I'll tell you something. It's necessary for your livelihood. It's necessary for your health and well-being. You need to laugh often, daily, if not moment, um, every moment. Well, I guess I would say there are two things you can learn from my life. One is how important it is to laugh. How important it is to be true to the side of you inside that knows that laughter is what life is all about. And the other is the obvious one, isn't it? It's what all you intellectuals are saying, that you just can't judge a person from what you see on the outside. It's easy to create a facade in this environment that people will buy into because they want to buy into it. Because it fits. Because it looks accommodating. So my, my inspirational message here today is laugh. Let yourself laugh. Remind yourself of how important it is to find joy in this. Remind yourself that There's nothing more important. Nothing more important than letting yourself be who you know you are, regardless of what others tell you you should be. It seems like the theme of the moment in the human experience right now. For the last year, Lockheed Martin Skunk Works has been working closely with the Russians to develop the most sophisticated, advanced, efficient, and state-of-the-art anti-terrorism drone weapon ever conceived of in order to put an end to the ISIS threat. We are pleased to announce that very soon we're about to deploy the Jihadist Undermining Destroyer Infiltrating Sentinel 
Goat Drone, or Judas Goat for short. With a futuristic AI operating system and an authentic external appearance, the Judas Goat is literally indistinguishable from an actual live goat. Powered by the newest quantum Tesla technology, when an ISIS member inserts their slick willy into the back-end interface port of the apparatus, the Judas Goat delivers a lethal 100 amperes of electrical charge directly into the central nervous system of the offending terrorist, resulting in zero collateral damage. Oh, mm, holy Allah Akbar! Oh, such a hard, exhausting day! Killing little babies and beating women. Ooh. Oh, oh, I need to wind down and relax and get my dick wet. Oh, there's a nice one over there, yes. Oh, oh, come here, baby. Oh, oh, I got something for you. Oh, I gonna stick my scud missile into your little Paris opening there, yes. Oh, here comes Daddy! Oh, you <laughs> The Judas Goat will then automatically protect its cover and run directly into the nearest herd of goats. With its fiber optic adaptive fur, its chameleon capabilities allow it to change its color hue to match with the surrounding goats. Lockheed Martin strives for excellence in its continued efforts to combat global terrorism. As Vladimir Putin once said, it's God's job to forgive the terrorists, but it's our job to send them to him. Students at Pittsburgh University were so triggered by Milo Yiannopoulos' critique of feminism and Black Lives Matter, they demanded counsellors should have been present in the next room to help people who were traumatised by his opinions. Listen to the absurd statements these whinging crybabies made after the event. So many of us shared in our pain. I felt I was in danger, and I felt so many people in that room were in danger. <laughs> This is more than hurt feelings, this is about real violence. That so many people walked out of that event feeling in literal, physical danger is not alright. Real violence? What fucking violence? There was no violence! Words can't sprout fists and punch you in the face. Opinions can't physically manifest into baseball bats. Words aren't weapons, they can't cause physical pain. Bing 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 bing, bong bong bing bing. I'm triggered. You're the only ones engaging in violence when you physically try to stop people from attending a Ben Shapiro lecture. You're the only ones engaging in violent rhetoric when you threaten to bomb Protein World and Gamergate meetups. You whine all day about other people's opinions being violent while using violent intimidation to stop those opinions from being heard. So boo hoo, somebody disagreed with your stupid fucking opinions. Big deal. Somebody go the way. What did you say? There's this thing called free speech. Don't know if you've heard of it. It's so broad, it even gives idiots like you a platform to spew bullshit. Oh, but Milo dared to point out that college rape culture was a myth based on fraudulent statistics. The only rape culture in the West is when facts rape social justice warriors. He didn't just say what I think he did, did he? Universities are supposed to be about free-flowing debate, raucous dissent, and having your ideas challenged. Not trigger warning safe spaces and censorship of anyone who you disagree with. If your reaction to your beliefs being put to the test is to start crying and demanding counselling, chances are those beliefs aren't very solid. <laughs> Oh yeah, and being offended isn't a form of activism. Smearing yourselves with fake blood while chanting moronic mantras isn't going to boost your credibility. Listen up, pussies. Your feelings don't have rights. You don't have a right not to be offended. Facts don't care if you flee to your safe space and your crybaby counselling because you can't handle them. Facts don't care 
about your feelings. Fuck your feelings. Social justice warriors are stupid. Even a fourth grader knows that much. Social warrior justice. Oh. Social justice. Warriors. Warriors are stupid. Say it again. You can say it, it's simple. Social justice warriors are stupid! They're a bunch of dummies. Social warriors are Social justice warriors. Social warriors. Social justice warriors. Social justice warriors are stupid. Can you see it a little more happy? Say, like, social justice warriors are stupid! Hey, I want my maple! No, just social justice warriors are stupid! I identify with nipple clamps. Feeling triggered yet? <laughs> Welcome to Real Dad Tip and Educational. Perfect, thank you. If you really want enlightenment, then just lighten up. you have uh, quite a few interesting concepts that I would like you to tell me about. Well, where do we begin? Sigmund Freud. You're a Colonel Sanders, dude. Or who he's trying to be. There you go. Here is Sigmund Freud. <laughs> Who do you think this guy is? He, there you go. Okay. What do you think of Sigmund Freud? I think he was the father of psychology. All right. Any personal opinions? It helped me greatly when I was growing up. Because I used to read psychology today. What do you think of Sigmund Freud? Uh, mom, um. Now you're making this tough on me. I'm, I'm a, a, a smart man. How's that? Yeah. Any other personal opinions? I don't know if I believe everything he says. So, Justin Bieber, what do you think about me? What do you think of Sigmund Freud? I think he's like super smart and stuff. And stuff? Yeah. Would you like to expand on stuff? No. Okay. 
Thank you for your time. Okay, what do you think of Sigmund Freud? Okay, what do you think of Sigmund Freud? Would you like to expand on that? Do you believe in his concept? Something, yeah. <laughs> what do you think of Freud and his concept? Um, I think he's a little bit uh, <laughs> Are there any certain ones that you believe or disbelieve or anything? Um, gosh, it's been a long time since I've about Freud. Um, the whole mouth thing, I kind of believe. <laughs> with a cigar. <laughs> Have your cigar with you. There you go. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so what do you think about Freud and his concepts? Freud and his concepts. Uh, I would say a little bit uh, um, but out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are there any certain things you believe or don't believe or Freudian slips? <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else that you wanna add? Believe or disbelieve? Uh, I don't know. I mean I guess his theory is that you say things because internally you're thinking about them even though you're not thinking about them, is that kind of his yeah, kind of like a double mind, thinking thing. Mind is Why should Sigmund Freud be remembered? Because he's the founder of modern psychology and he's helped many people by instead of talking or instead of killing them, he's talked to them and by the way, he he studied his dreams at night. Did you do that? Oh, if you want to talk concept-wise, uh, one of my favorite concepts would be uh, something I did very early in life. I uh, did a lot of experimentation on it. Um, it's a little known substance known as the cocaine, as the Colombians call it. And uh, it's uh, quite special indeed. It uh, is the bomb, y'all. Yeah. Save for later. And you see how the white person takes cocaine. If they cut it up into little lines and then they press on one nostril. While sniffing on the other and uh, maybe the other. And uh, I'll save the rest. It's a, it's a quite a strange, nice theme, if you want to think about it. Um, yeah. Was that for real? Hello, children. My name is Sigmund Freud, and I'm going to teach you about some psychological concepts today. Our first psychological concept is the unconscious mind. Now that's where all your sick, perverted, dirty thoughts, you boys, that's where it lies. But also it's where your dreams come from. Not to mention, you might think you only are thinking about one thing. You're thinking about at least like 18 things, you guys. That's how the psychological mind works when it's unconscious compared to the conscious mind. Uh, one of the concepts I developed under the influence of cocaine, okay. yes, is the psychosexual development concept. Jalen, on your knees, come here. He's always so good, right? Anyways, and Hannah, you too. They're such really important pieces. <laughs> so Jalen is the daughter in this scenario. Hannah, you would be pleased the father, and I'm so pleased the mother, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Solar Street Jane Lenville. <laughs> I don't know how to spell a girl name. He's just so good. Don't you love mommy? Yes, you do. You're mommy's favorite little daughter. <laughs> 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 and you'll see that is the Electra concept where the daughter secretly thinks about killing the mother and sleeping with the father. It's, it's some crazy stuff, man. Crazy stuff. In reverse opposite to that, to the contrary, we have the adjective from that. Now, Sam and Amber. Amber, come on, Amber. Yes, you do. Oh, they are so excited to be up here. Amber, you shall be the little boy, okay? Sam, you'll be the dad. And I'll be the mother, yes. <laughs> oh, goodness, it's the greatest. Well, let's see. If your father is shorter than you, you might as well be on your knees. <laughs> okay, so I have a pretty much an example of what this would be. That's the demonstration. I hate you, Daddy. Mm -hmm. Mommy, I love you. Yes, your mommy's favorite little boy. <laughs> and that would be the Edifice Complex. Now, you see, I have learned that Sexual development is not done in the puberty days, but it actually starts during the child years. Now I've been told it's controversial and it doesn't make sense, and you're a horrible coke addict, Sigmund Freud. But you know, I mean, those people are just jealous because I do it like a bomb. <laughs> is, is there any driver in pocket? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, the next thing, children, is what we call a phallic symbol. And if it's plural, it's symbols. So that would be something like a banana, okay? So next time you want to eat a banana, just think. You're eating a phallic symbol. This is a very anorexic banana. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, phallic symbols are anything that look like either female or male genitalia. And you see, it's especially used to put them in advertisements. So pretty much anytime you see anything sexual, that is a fallacy. I also see food to eat like popsicles and hot dogs and obviously bananas and anything that looks like male genitalia. I'm not sure the food that looks like female genitalia. Those are fallacies. The next concept we have is Freudian slip ups. Yeah. Okay. Sam, would you like to come up here? Yes, do it, Sam. Have to come. Oh, that's so weird. So a Freudian slip-up would be like something where Sam is holding a stack of these papers that obviously do not want to be picked up. And when I look at Sam, I notice my eye direction because I unconsciously dream about Sam's boobs, I guess. That's how it and when I talk to Sam and I say, hey, that's a nice big rat. <laughs> Instead of that's a nice big stack, that's because the unconscious mind is projecting through my verbal communication of what I want. So now the thing would be if I would say as a male was going to the other male and Jaden is holding at the rock and God. I'm looking down there. Where, where? And I say, that's a nice cocky other. I mean, rock. <laughs> that is another Freudian slip up. Another example is penis envy. Hannah, would you like to come up here? Oh, yes, you would love to come up here for a demonstration. See, the penis envy is when the female wishes she had a penis because she thinks life would be easier with a penis. You're wrong. <laughs> It's harder. <laughs> Women are evil. They rule the world. So that is pretty much being a in a nutshell. Like, you're kind of like Sam, 
Not gay. <laughs> she wishes she was a man. <laughs> Another concept we have is talk therapy. So, Amber. Oh, Amber, yes. Oh, I find you always. So Amber here. Okay, Amber here is psychotic. Okay. We perform lobotomies and shock therapy to Amber. Amber's still crazy. <laughs> so I decided to talk to Amber like normal person to hopefully make her problems go away. And when that doesn't work, we feed her loving, tender medication, children. It always solves everything. Yes, go back to yourself, Amber. And you see, those are just a few concepts we have. But my favorite concept is okay. It's the bomb, y'all. What? You try to make everything I did on cocaine. You can't, because cocaine is amazing. Anyways, so that is all the concepts we have as we are being waved up. Thank you, Ms. Elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, unwilling participating. I'll be the same, I'll be the same here, Freud. Another amazing discovery I found was when I was working and doing therapy treatment with people who've had psychological problems with them, and a, a friend of mine suggested the idea that he's been using for a while, which was to sit down and actually talk with the patient. And through all that talking, I have discovered that just possibly even just talking to the patient and loving tender medication can solve all of the mental problems. And, you know, I mean, seriously, like a pill a day and uh, super expensive therapy treatments make all problems go away. Not to mention the greatest scam ever. Seriously. Rebellious teenagers forming opinions next to you know, white suburban crazy mothers sending their children to therapy. It's the greatest thing. And you can charge hundreds of dollars for hours. I mean, how do you think I pay for the iPhone? It's called seriously. Greatest ideas. Us Jews know how to do it right. And remember kids, stay off crack. Do cocaine. It's a cleaner cut. And all the cool kids are doing it. And you want to be cool, right? Sure you do. Okay, so... Listen to this, because I think you guys are going to think this is badass, right? A couple oh. days ago, I shot a video. of Those of you who have seen it, um, you know, great. If you haven't, you probably want to watch it. Uh, it's basically where I said, Amir is sick and tired of the bullshit. I put it on oh. Facebook and tagged a bunch of people. And I just want to share my analytics with you, because I've been, I've been <laughs> inspired. Post has been inspired by somebody here. You know, somebody named Nabil, but he's he's one of the inspirations to why Amir decided to make the video. And before I show you the analytics, I want you to realize how powerful this is. I have been shooting videos for I don't know how long, right? And I guess it was like the same boring, stupid shit, so people weren't watching them. But um, I shot the video where I was just sick and tired of bullshit, and it was just... I'm just so angry. I just couldn't even like write or do nothing. I just needed to just grab the camera and be like, "Listen," <laughs> and just like just went at it. But um, <laughs> that's basically what happened. So here, I'm gonna share my my results with you right now to just show you what just happened to YouTube. It just went <gasps> absolutely psycho, right? Look at look at what just happened. It just went from nothing, three minutes, nine minutes, zero minutes, ten minutes, two minutes to whoosh. <laughs> 17 <laughs> hours and two minutes. <laughs> just from being just crazy actually. on the camera? Just from being crazy on the camera. People just wanted to watch this. My next. You know what's really funny is my friend Dave Kelso. He, I know he's watching the Hangout right now because he's talking to me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. But that's exactly what he's sharing with me is that like he that's why he's so irreverent like he has a YouTube channel called paradigm shift and educational comedy I mean if you haven't seen it go check it out because it's pretty funny but <laughs> <laughs> like um, his 
his channel is just so irreverent and he is swearing and he I mean he's he's even like the funny thing is he's just not afraid to be so crazy and irreverent even in a circle of people who are super spiritual. I mean, so he faces a whole bunch of flack and shit from people, but you know, it's because he has this crazy irreverent humor and just he's like psycho on camera, but I mean, he's he's so entertaining to watch and listen to, and that's why and that's kind of clicking for me right now. Like that's why people actually want to view things. <laughs> it's because it's so ridiculous, right? It is. It is. We've got to do the crazy. I mean, the title, the theme here, it's Connection. Welcome to Love Connection, where old-fashioned romance meets modern-day technology. Uh, people just wanted to watch this. My next. You know what's really funny is my friend Dave Kelso. It does. It's not enough. It's too vague to su suffice. What I'm looking for here. But what my dad told me is that it's connection. So here we have connection. What the hell? Here's something that I've been contemplating for a long time, and it's just kind of gnawing at the back of my brain. So I turn to run, but it's not too long. There's a zombie chasing me. Moving his hands like <laughs> stumbling around like <laughs> got my hands up, but not for too long. You know I'm trying to get away. <laughs> Zombies and they're eating brains. But <laughs> like, um, his his channel is just so irreverent, and he is swearing, and he I mean he's he's even like. We got to do the crazy. I mean, think as you've probably seen on one of my posts, where I'm just I'm awake, but I'm tired, and my inhibitions are gone. So here I am on a video, but I, and also I found the third ball. I've seen Austin Powers, I know it exists, and I found it, it's in there, and here I am. Yeah, baby, yeah! So, my question, yeah, wait, well, one more, one more thing. First world problems. I have my notes typed up on my iPad. Editing is all Mac-based now. I mean, you know, there are programs out there on the PC, but whether you're using Avid or using Final Cut Pro, you're working on a Macintosh. Using a Mac is a little different than using a PC. It's not so much operating computer as it is sort of tricking it fooling it into doing what it is you really want it to do. Uh, you kind of have to sneak up on the Mac. I don't feel like I'm operating the Mac so much as I'm just there sharing the Mac experience. And if I can do something useful while the Mac is willing, so much the better. Another app, but I can't multitask while doing a video. One of the coolest features of the Macintosh is it's really easy to shut down. Uh, all you have to do is be using a piece of software and then poof, it goes away. It's gone. It's shut down. You didn't push any buttons, you didn't close, you didn't even save. It's just gone. Unless you want to shut down a Mac, oh, that's a whole other story. I mean, you try to close a program and it locks up, and then you do that funny, what is it, the cloverleaf period thing? But it's unnatural and ultimately useless interrupt key. Yep, so I have no notes. And my hard drive crashed. Then nothing moves. Then you push the power button and it won't turn off. You go around and unplug it, and you better hope you're not on a laptop, because then you got to find the damn battery and try to pull that out of the thing. It'll never shut down. So I put my CD in the CD-ROM tray, and I'm copying media off that CD, dragging it onto my desktop, dragging it onto my desktop, dragging it onto my desktop. I eject it, and where did my files go? It's the only operating system I know of where click and drag does not mean you actually copy or move anything. No, you're just making shortcuts on your desktop. So I've got my next CD, and I slam it into the CD-ROM tray, and lo and behold, it starts playing all by itself. I'm looking for a way to turn it off. Finally, out of desperation, I click and drag the CD into the garbage can. The system locks up. So I go to the Cloverleaf period spacebar thing, hoping I can stop the program, and I get a little caution window saying, careful, interrupting this program may lock up the system. I try to click OK, but the system's already locked up! What? I know with, I know everything about computers, and my hard drive just crashed. It's today. Boop. Oh, I like the handle here. That's so you can attach a chain and use it as a boat anchor! The Mac is practicing some kind of bizarre psychological warfare on me because I'm working late at night, and at the corner of my eye I keep seeing this thing jumping up and down. The update manager is bouncing at the bottom of the screen like a Jack Russell fucking terrier! So I'm looking around in the list of the files, trying to find the executable that wants me to update, and if I click on any one of them by accident, I rename it! Oh no, it's been renamed nothing. It was some kind of important system file, and the computer crashes! On a PC, no data is really lost. I mean, there's a way to undelete a file. If you know what you're doing in DOS, you can go in and recover anything that's been corrupted. 
on a Mac. If you lose a file, you run to the store, you get a copy of the Mac version of Norton Utilities. You run back only to have Norton go, you idiot, you own a Macintosh. The file is fucking gone. Gone, so I can't print them off either. So, I got like this little one sentence written down right here. It's just gone. Don't have any tools or any kind of buttons or whatever dials or switches in the bottom of the screen because if you reach for them, the dock menu comes up. Ah! You've got to like angle around and slide and dodge the thing to get to the control. It's kind of like boxing with your computer. I can put it on the bottom, I can put it on the left, I can put it on the right. No, I can't put it on the top. That's reserved for the mighty blue apple. Gah! My name is Hunter Kressel, I'm an editor, and I cut together everything you saw tonight on a Macintosh. Mac killed my inner child. And it's just kind of a question, and I was hoping it just kind of let me kind of flow what I'm thinking of out there for what I want to do. But, it's just kind of like when you go to the doctors, and you just hear, well I'm going really off topic here, but anyway, where you just have to like keep telling your story to each doctor over and over and over again. So what happened? Well, I hit my head and blah 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 blah. All right, next time. Well, so I hit my head, but well, I kind of and it just. Kind of... Ain't nobody got time for that. 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 It kind of turns gray and mushy, and it's out there, but it's just kind of you don't have the details anymore because you like. It, You've exhausted them away, so I've just kind of had this too much going on, and I finally got this video going, and well, the balls to get this video going. So I've I've like had practice rounds, I've written it all down, I've looked at it, thought about it. So it's kind of turned to the gray mush, but let's okay. So the question is, why do we seek relationships? And that question is pretty vague. Let's try a different one. Why do we seek relationships with someone to call your significant other? Alright, now I have this question because... Wow, this is where you need notes. Because I do not remember. Give me a moment. It'll come to me. Just have your laughs and giggles and shit. Okay. I need more in a sentence. Great notes. Good job, Justin. Good job. Alright, so let me, let me just backtrack here. Wow, this is going to be like a really raw video, especially since I can't edit it. So, alright, so connection, alright. What is it we are seeking when we find somebody and we call them your significant other? Why is it that suddenly you find this person and then all of a sudden instead of them being your friend or a colleague or an acquaintance, they have to be yours? And then with that, you have, you're willing to take all this extra baggage for no apparent reason, and apparently it's more special when you put a name on it instead of when you just treat them as your friend or an acquaintance. Why the heck is this? And it's kind of it's kind of just been back there because for me everything needs to have a rhyme, it has to have a reason, there has to be something going on with it. And it's just one of those things where it's just irrational and it's stupid. And it's just kind of there and it's one of those things where somebody just beat me down and tell me how it is or something, you know. Because, yeah, because, I really wish I had better notes. That's because. I need my notes. And cut. And cut? Um, I don't have scissors, I just have a shovel. You can press stop. Oh, okay. But it doesn't say stop, there's just this red button. You can press the red button, Dave. I can? Yeah. With that? Yeah. With this? Hey. <laughs> red button. <coughs> oh, I'm sore throat coughing. Anybody else out there maybe got Ebola? I do... Ebola!
This video is for all you stupid fucking trolls and haters online, saying mean and hurtful things about fedoras. Well guess what, they rule harder than you, dipshits. You don't fucking know anything about this hat, idiots. Quite frankly, quite frankly, I just think you're jealous ass haters, because you couldn't even pull off this wear, this look. If you couldn't even, you couldn't even wear a fedora if your life's depended on it, because you know what? It's class, and class is for men and swag is for boys. But you wouldn't know shit about that, fucking haters. This hat is for what cool people wear, and you can't figure it out. You sit there online on your fucking websites and you say bullshit about it, but guess what? It's just a hat, and you're not even cool enough to wear it. So next time you think before you do trolling, I'd implore you to do a little bit of thinking, if that's even possible for you, to think before you do fucking hating on fedoras. They're just a hat, and you're just a stupid swag idiot. You think swag is so cool, well guess what, it's for boys, and class is for men. This is class. That's all I got to say to you stupid ass haters and bullshit bully trolls. You don't know shit, you don't know fashion, you don't know anything about this world if you keep saying bullshit jokes. I know you're just trying to be stupid and ass funny, but it's not fucking funny. Get the fuck offline if you're gonna keep saying this bullshit, keep spouting it out of your stupid ass keyboards that probably aren't even mechanical. Listen, log off, idiots. You don't know shit. You stupid swag. You don't know shit, and I dare you to say one more fucking joke and I'll slit your throat neck. Anyway, that's it, haters. See you later, fucking idiots. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Look, motherfucker. Fedora isn't a hat, okay? It's a distribution of Linux, alright? So, like, stop busting on, on Fedora Linux. Like, okay, I run Ubuntu because it's cooler, but, but, you know, Fedora's still cool too. And, and you're busting on Fedora Linux because you're saying it's a hat. And you don't know shit about operating systems. You're either probably some pansy mac fanboy or 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 you're running like windows 8 which is like the worst fucking ever or you're getting gang raped by the so-called free windows 10 update and they say it's free and they say to update but really when you update it's like ha fuck you it's only free for a year now pay motherfucker so yeah like 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 you have like like swag like a fag and and I've got class like an ass okay uh -huh. so so like like shut up you you're you're like just you need to get offline cuz cuz like you're you're like picking on fedora linux cuz cuz you're you're a meanie poopy face hater who like sticks up his middle finger like every five seconds because you're such a hater. <laughs> and I'm a Common Core student, okay? I learn more with Common Core. So so don't you diss on, on globalist corporate controlled brainwashing systems, okay? <laughs> They're your friend. They are. And, and if you you say they aren't, then then you're an anti-Semite and, and, and a racist. And, and, and you hate black people. And, and you and, and and you fucking stick your dick in Confederate flags, okay? <laughs> no wait, what dick? <laughs> okay, so you stop bashing Fedora Linux, or or I'm gonna I'm gonna slick the the neck neck hole pussy fuck of, of your of your pinky finger, okay? <laughs> Okay, so, so, like, and I, I can fucking wear black too. You're fucking copying me, you, you poser. <laughs> so, stop busting on Fedora Linux, cause, 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 yeah, you, you poopy fuck. <laughs> I like singing! I like dancing! I like trains. <laughs> Hello, mine turtle. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. If you really want enlightenment, then just lighten up. Screw gravity. 
Hello, Armageddon Turtle. Hello! Suddenly, pineapples. The universe does not expect you to have to struggle. It does not expect you to have to, in any way, shape, or form, suffer. Circumstances don't matter, only state of being a matter. Circumstances don't matter, only state of being a matter. Piano! What was the idea was this? Everybody do the flop! Let's think about Aladdin and the sexual genie. Rainbows! <laughs> Okay, let's not. That's a little creepy. What the f*** is this? Oh, that's what you could have been saving if you had Geico. Geico? Who wants Geico? Oh no, I am not stepping on you. It's the money you could be saving with Geico. Even after this commercial ends, he'll be here waiting. He just wants you to save money. Tell me who's watching. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. The Western Church arose to a position of supreme power. Kingmaker, landowner, and purveyor of the truth. The church took it upon themselves to be the one knower of everything. The dogma was law. Yet science had moved forward and now challenged the dogma that the earth was the center of the universe. Everybody do the flop! What are you up to, son? I like trains. <laughs> yes, you do. World strategy for America. In this period, when really a new world order can be created, it's a great opportunity. No, wait! I'm allergic to adorableness! That would be the most flattering compliment I've ever received. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I'm gonna do an internet! Sometimes I can be a little bit too hard on myself, and that's not necessarily, like, the most easy thing for me to admit, but it really is probably one of the most true things. I have, like, unreasonable expectations of myself sometimes, and just because I've learned a lot of things, I expect myself to retain all that knowledge at all times and not be a human. Almost like a robot. I used to wish I was a robot when I was a kid, it's really weird. Feed me paper. Answer the damn phone. I am the Prince of Darkness, I need the souls. I command thee to give me your souls! Hello! I like your mom when I'm banging her. <laughs> what do you like? I like trains. No, 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 wait, wait! Everybody do the flop! Now, the funniest thing you've ever seen, from really far away. A transition is about to occur, a dimensional shift that will lessen the density of the third dimension so that you will move into higher dimensions in which the body does not have such a solid state. Why wait? 
dealing with the new age paradigm. You pretend you're happy, but you're always so sick. So sick. People mention it, you claim they're a dick. You get back what you put out of this have no doubt. Here comes the aeroplane! Dealing with the new age paradigm. Only state of being at her circumstances both at her only state of being at her Desmond the moon bear You suck Bashar The end Your mother sucks bunions in hell I am the prince of darkness Hello Uh 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 I'm just gonna uh uh uh, 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 what's a constitution? Oh my god, that is so true. And, and, when you, when and you do, uh, uh, he looks to the side like he's like he said something pro profound. He's like, he looks over. And he's like, like, that teleprompter there that says one thing. That teleprompter there is telling me another. Which teleprompter am I supposed to read from? Thanks for the day, pizza. Okay then. <laughs> hey, Joey, do you want to eat me? No thanks, Mr. Muffin. But I want to die. You gotta help me, man. My tie is evil and it's gonna kill me. <laughs> Please don't hurt me. <laughs> the home silicon breast implant kits featuring Winnie the Pooh. Oh no! Giant flying sheep! Those are clouds. You know how else you can tell real ice cream? Ah! I screamed. And that, it was real. <laughs> <laughs> hey, kid, you can't skate here. You can't tell me what to do. Fail. Knock knock! Who's there? <laughs> that door! Hey Katarina, you're really gonna like our trains. They're, they're a bit different than the ones in Portland. They're they're actually kind of like puppy dogs. They could do tricks. I'm not kidding. Here, here, check this out. Watch, watch. Look over there. See the train? Come on, train. Come on. Come on, jump. Come on, jump. Jump, puppy. Come on, jump puppy train, jump, jump! Oh, good puppy train. Ooh, puppy train made a mess. Ew. Clean up on aisle five. And here we are, the granddaddy of all quantum weirdness, the infamous double slip experiment. To understand this experiment, we first need to see how particles, or little balls of matter, act. If we randomly shoot... <laughs> it does, it's not enough, it's too vague to su suffice what I'm looking for here, but what my dad told me is that it's connection. So here we have connection. What the hell? Here's something that I've been contemplating for a long time, and it's just kind of gnawing at the back of my brain. So I turn to run, but it's not too long, there's a zombie chasing me. 
moving his hands like <laughs> Stumbling around like <laughs> Got my hands up but not for too long You know I'm trying to get away <laughs> Zombies and their eating brains My boyfriend said I'm the most beautiful girl in the world <laughs> My boyfriend said that too There can be only one I never seen no one uglier be than you. Me? I didn't know you could sing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here insulting my dad. <laughs> you know? Doctor, I'm afraid of backstories. When did this all start? Well, uh... Hello, little circle. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Who said that? Where are you? This is always the tricky part to explain. I'm in another dimension, another space. I am above you. What are you? Are you a god? This Die, potato. Finish him. Die, potato. Hey, you want to play Catch the Knife? Sure! Man, I suck at this game! I love dogs. Arf, 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 arf. Hello, Sean. Hey, stop, man. How you been? Hey, 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 hey. I love dogs. Oh, they're just so girly. I've got balls. Yeah, I'm a manly man. It's old dogs right here on my 46. I'm so lost. It's not English, that's for sure. Hey, buddy, turn that frown upside down. Okay. Desmond the Moon Bear. Circumstances both at the end. The native arm seems to have aggravated the deer. And there's a picture of the deer's ass. As it lifts its tail, probably to take a shit. Yup, there goes the shit. We've got the deer shit on camera. Yes, we've got deer shit on camera. As a native moron observes the deer taking her shit. Somebody help me, I'm being robbed! I'll save you. Tree powers activate. Ma'am, I'm afraid I caught your son doing homework. Where did I go wrong? The new Xbox One, set to be released later this week, can see your penis. Hey, you know who's gay? You. Oh, come on! world. Okay, Jim, I'll see you around. Where are you going? Oh, no. oh no. Oh, that's not what I thought he meant by that at all. This is your brain. This is your brain on Fox News, those lying sons of bitches. Oh, what is happening? Why would you do this? I can't even... Why are you punching your son? This is what Fox News does to your brain. It turns it into fucking mush. It's 
squeezes it, makes you a freaking zombie, Damn. and then Damn. It Damn. Hey, baby, are you an angel? Because I'm allergic to feathers. <laughs> got your nose. <laughs> Look out, he's got a nose. Brief interview with Piers Morgan. <laughs> You're leaving me? Sorry, Eddie. I've met a real man. Hi, babe. Yes, I am real man. You want to go skateboards? Whether you believe in metaphysics or not, I think it's pretty common sense that it's almost impossible to do anything with this up your ass. Okay, it's a no-brainer here. If that's up your ass, you're gonna have difficulty. Yeah, so lose the shovel. <laughs> Quick, shoot me in the face! You're getting mugged, kid! No, you're getting mugged. Ah, how the hell does that even work? Hey, son, catch! Banana fight! No! Don't try acting like someone that you're not, because being yourself is beautiful and unique. And stay that way. You are a beautiful butterfly. What? That was so random. Do you ever get tired of being random? Me neither. I'm a Christian gangster. Yeah. Oh. I'm a Christian gangster. Yeah. Oh. The best part of waking up is Satan in your cup. Wait, how did I get here? Because. Shut up. Now don't interrupt narrator anymore, bitch. And now, ducks. I was just about to say that. Are you serious? Totally. Oh, that's spooky. We are so in sync. Mommy, mommy, look, a turtle. Hello. If you only knew the power of the dark screen. <laughs> <laughs> no, Rita, execute order 69. I'm in the mood to fuck. Happy birthday from the dark side. You can press stop. Oh, okay. But it doesn't say stop, there's just this red button. You can press the red button, Dave. I can? Yeah. With that? Yeah. With this? Hey. <laughs> red button. Hi. I'm going to be using cute, cuddly animals to boost Rochelle's confidence as she is having a not-so-confident feeling day. Let's see how that turns out. Hello, Rizal. We are rats. And we are cute. Look at how cute we are. We are cute little rats, Rizal. You know we cannot resist our cuteness. Look at how we run around our cute. Yes, we are rats and we are cute. That is how we roll. You cannot resist our cuteness. You cannot run from it. We are cute. We are rats. How we roll. Hello, Rochelle. Le Pierre. Le Pierre. Pierre. You know I am so sexy. You want this piece of pussy? Yes, you do. I am such sexy kitty. Le Pierre. Hello, Rochelle. I am fluffy kitty. And I am so fluffy. I look away from you because I am so fluffy. And I am full of myself because I am arrogant kitty. And I go, shun, shun, because I am too cute for you, cute, yes. Oh, now I look at you again, because I feel like it. Oh, now I am running, like you run away from yourself. This is a reversion of your paradigms. Hi, Rochelle. I'm Mr. Bear, and I want to talk to you. You know you can't resist me, because I'm all cute. I'm a cute bear and stuff. So, yeah. And why, why is Dave grabbing my throat? Help! He's trying to murder me! Ah, get me out of here! Fuck! Ah! Hello, cute little animals. The 21st century is the age of information, where empires rise and fall, businesses flourish or go broke, and people live and die 
not by the sword of metal, but by the sword of public opinion. In this brave new world, we at the Obama administration have taken this situation very seriously. We care about you, and we want you to be as successful as you can be, so that you can continue to do your part as a loyal, patriotic, obedient, unquestioning American citizen. After several years of research and development, our United Nations think tank has created the perfect tool that will make your victory an assured one. Let us be perfectly clear that we are pleased to present to you the race card. Here's how it works. When someone has a different opinion than you do, their expression of this opinion is a threat to the very continuity of your existence and must be crushed with impunity. To use the race card, you simply respond with the claim that anyone who disagrees with you is a racist. If you are black or Jewish, this works especially well, because your slander can be wielded to directly compare your opposition to slavers and Nazis. If someone happens to be the same race as you are, simply insist that they are a self-hater. Be as absolutely ridiculous in your accusations as possible so that their mind has no time to adapt to form an intelligent response. Interrupt them as much as possible. Ask as many unrelated questions as you can and make sure they are all character attacks and detract from any point they are trying to make. Be sure to also use intimidation tactics that elude to the idea that anyone else who agrees with them and not you is also a racist. Be sure to use as much shaming and guilting as possible. Always avoid any real facts or evidence about any issue. The president himself has tested the race card, and its success is unprecedented and its efficiency unrivaled. For more information, please go online to whitehouse.gov forward slash race card. Together, we can make the world a safer place for anyone who agrees with everything Barack Obama says. As for everyone else, fuck them. They're just evil racists anyways. I'm Sleek Willie, and I approve this message. <laughs>
Instead, we will prevail by being strong and smart, resilient and relentless, <coughs> and by drawing upon every aspect of American power. Hillary Clinton has described already the meeting in the White House over two years ago. Everyone in the national security team recommended uh, arming ISIS. Everyone in the national security team recommended uh, arming ISIS. Everyone in the national security team recommended uh, arming ISIS. Recommended uh, arming ISIS. Arming ISIS. Arming ISIS. In a post-election emergency, massive flooding sweeps the nation today as tears and urine from depressed and angry Hillary Clinton supporters mixed with the saliva and vomit from the Donald Trump supporters celebrating at kegger parties. Though so far there is an approximated $3.6 billion in property damages, there have as of yet been no injuries or fatalities reported. In related news, unable to get any nookie from an enraged Hillary, former President Bill Clinton has begun having sexual relations with barnyard animals in Colorado. When questioned about the matter, Mr. Clinton assured us that the farmers have consented to all promiscuous activities and that he is not only smoking marijuana, he is most definitely going to be inhaling quite frequently. Dave Kelso, PSEC Media News. Yeah, I'm at AJ and a thrift store <laughs> and I discovered uh, this. Congratulations and success to James M. Ledbetter. 43 years of railroading. I mean, <laughs> did this guy work for the government? 43 years of railroading. <laughs> I mean, you know, is this like a career of ripping people off? Yeah. Did he work for the IRS, the NSA, the White House? You know, who did this this person That's work funny. for? 43 years of railroading. At least they're, they're good enough to admit it. You yeah. know, I mean, wow. This Look is like... That. Illuminati plaque of the year or something, <laughs> you know, congratulations, Mr. Rothschild, you know, 43 years of railroading, <laughs> you know, um, that's funny, uh, it's big new Brzezinski, congratulations, you know, you've done, uh, <laughs> you've done a wonderful <laughs> job, lots of railroading, you know, bombing the crap out of Gaza, all kinds of stuff, you know, <laughs> Sandy Hook 9-11, you know, th thanks for the good memories. <laughs> 43 years of railroading. Okay, that's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Uh, testing, testing. One, two, three. Yeah, this, this thing on? Uh, we, we connected to Earth? Uh, all right, all right, cool. Um, uh, roll the intro music. of energy from the Pleiades and uh, you guys and I uh, and us and oneness and all that we, we share a, a long history and uh, you know what history was never really my favorite subject anyway I mean the whole oneness and you know non-linear time thing kind, kind of really makes history a big mood point doesn't it hey, hey everybody what, what, do you, what do you say we go uh, you know, we go go hit up a bar or something. I hear there's this really awesome place in Sirius B where there's like some real hot chicks. Yeah, let's let's go let's go space folding over there and you know see if see see if we can uh, go get us some booty. Uh, I'm I'm sure Earth won't blow itself up or anything in the next few hours. So you know, we'll we'll, we'll get back to this later. Let's go get plastered. Is that a baby squirrel? Oh, there he is, little baby. Oh, oh hello, baby's buddy. Up. There he goes. In the bushes. Oh, oh, pumpkin's about climbing the screen. Hello, baby. <coughs> Where is he? Can you see him? Yeah, I can see him. Oh, um, I thought he was chugging a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> it, actually, it's it's just what the doctor ordered.
It's just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> yeah, so, what would you be your like tips and tricks to just get started and do something crazy? Like, is it like spontaneous? Do you plan your crazy out? Some and some. I mean, like, what is it that that inspires you to just say, "Oh, let's put this on video." <laughs> it's just impulsivity and spontaneity and things coming. The first most important thing is um, don't be afraid to be yourself. Because anything based on not being yourself, it's not going to do too well because it's going to be fake as hell. I mean, you got to be a natural at what you're doing. So you have to be aligned with yourself. So that means you got to be yourself while you're doing it. Because <laughs> people wonder why the hell they fail at everything. It's like, well, you're trying to do everything everybody else's way. And because we live in the totalitarian fascist fourth fucking Reich, um, basically, nobody else's way is going to work because, you know, school is just like, obey, don't ask questions, and don't eat Pop-Tarts or we're throwing you in jail. So, you know, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's just like we're so locked down. You know, a lot of people say that, you know, well, people are just lazy and they don't want to take responsibility. Well, it's not so much that they don't want to take responsibility. It's that we're trained by society to be, to be terrified of everything you know it's like we're terrified to take responsibility to not take responsibility we're terrified to live we're terrified to die we're terrified to love we're terrified to, ha to hate we're terrified to stay home we're terrified to go outside we're terrified to do anything and everything and that's why George W. Bush has the war on terror war on terror he started that up because you're aligning with the idea of terror so then your reality is like oh my god terror be fucking afraid of everything and that makes you fucking useless <laughs> I mean, you're sitting there terrified of everything. You're cowering in a corner, even being afraid of the fact that you're in the fucking corner cowering. So, I mean, it's like it just totally paralyzes you. You just got to kind of burst out and not be afraid to be yourself. And that's really the biggest key because until you reach that, anything you try to do is going to be screwed. And I learned that so many times the hard way. I would follow all these policies and procedures and methods and whatever. I'd be like, why didn't it work? I followed everything to the letter. It didn't work because I wasn't in my fucking sovereignty. Everybody else is making me their bitch, so where was I supposed to be going? <laughs> You're absolutely right. Yep. <laughs> I'm going back into the Matrix, Neo. All right. Do you think real? What is real? If real is what you can see and hear and taste and touch and smell, then real is nothing more than electrical impulses being interpreted by your brain. <laughs> nothing more than electrical impulses in this. Ooh. Right here. Mm -hmm. This is your brain. This is your brain on Fox News, those lying sons of bitches! This is what Fox News does to your brain. It turns it into fucking mush. It squeezes it, makes you a freaking zombie, Dave, and then. Dave, it... Dave. <laughs> Whoa. Come on, a little bit of a comedy routine there. Whoa. 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 You're shifting on and off. I am? The Matrix has you, Katarina. Reality, the quantum hologram. Dave. Mr. Anderson is going to come and visit you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Mr. Anderson. We miss you. Oh, look, I can do Matrix moves. <laughs> Hi there, this is Dave Kelso, and welcome to Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. We're going to show you some footage of a small dick Eric going after some kids and then get some people's opinions on the subject. Woo! Hey, wait up, Eric! That was a cool bear roll, man! Holy shit! I personally told you, Kevin, that I wanted to go to that party right in there. You didn't text me. You, listen, you have my number, okay? I was going to bring little baby sodas. I know you like Dr. Pepper, okay? They, they like Sprite. Uh, I mean, I follow you guys on Instagram. 
You couldn't have posted something? I didn't see a post. I said I want to play Duck Duck Goose. Duck, all right? We're playing a game. Sit down. I want to play. I want to play Duck Duck. Okay, just so everybody knows, we are playing Duck Duck Goose in that corner. So come hang out. I know you're in. Who said I had a small penis? You guys have to tell me. I asked you, and I'm an officer of the law. Okay, you are under arrest for calling me Small Dick Eric. Hey, Small Dick Eric! Who said Small Dick Eric? My first question goes to Katarina Edwards Roy and Paul Roy. In your opinion, just how big of a complete and total freaking loser do you think that someone like Small Dick Eric would have to be to be, you know, running around, whipping it out, going out for kids like that? Just, just how big of a loser? <laughs> it is what it is, yo. That's right. Mm -hmm. He looks all crazy. It doesn't work. Just, just keep it down. Anyway. Sorry, because, you know, it was there. Attracted to, like, moving objects. Yep. <laughs> Shiny thing. Ooh. Pretty much what happened. Well, that seems completely logical to me. Um, Tobias Lars, do you suspect that there might have been any MK Ultra programming going on here, or maybe he was indoctrinated into a satanic cult of some sort? Uh, your thoughts on maybe the chances of that sort of thing? So we gotta get real with the deal here. What's the real deal? It comes down to some nitty gritty things. Not, I mean, that makes sense, right? We're avoiding it, avoidance. He conjured demons. Okay, what we call demons, entities, and you know he's doing the, the 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 star, you know the circle, the magic ritual, conjuring entities. Now here's the thing: why does he do that? The unacknowledged, subconscious, unexpressed, repressed, suppressed aspects, aspects. I'd say that definitely sounds plausible. He did seem more than just a little bit creepy there. Um, so, Teal Swan, I'd like to know if you think that maybe he was outwardly, psychologically projecting, perhaps, due to some emotional or mental abuses that uh, he might have suffered as a child or something? This is the basis of our justice system, and it begins in the home. What you find in people is that this punishment system which you first see in the home, the punishment which the parents or the caregivers or society inflicts on the children for them doing something which is considered bad, begins to be internalized and pretty soon that external punishment system is replaced with an internal self-regulation system which is a system of self-punishment and self-blame. Teal, I think you totally hit the nail on the head with that one. Now, Bashar, from a metaphysics and consciousness perspective, um, I'm curious as to what you think um, Officer Pedo Bear's state of being was when he was trying to hornily go after and otherwise butt rape those kids. Just 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 curious as to the the energetic state of being that he might have been experiencing and what your take on that state of being might possibly be. Expressed in the concept of play. Of playing with everything that happens in your reality. Really having an attitude of gratitude toward it so that you receive every experience you have in a playful way and thus by receiving it in that playful way can do that much more with it. Be that much more creative with it. Allow it to be that much more flexible, malleable, stretchable, changeable, formable. Yeah, definitely seems to me like he was trying to play and getting those kids to be his little duck, duck, butt break, goosey goose uh, situation there. Yeah, more than just a little creepy seeing as it seemed like he was wanting to definitely make things changeable and formable and dumb. Yeah, right in there. Yeah, share of hot pants going to town. All right. Mm, yeah. 
So, my last question I would like to point at Henry Kissinger, seeing as Mr. Kissinger, I'm, I'm sure, goes at um, Obama's uh, firm asshole, you know, at least a couple of times daily, just looking at that going, mm, you know, because he's a part of the Illuminati. Y'all get so naughty. Um, I was curious, seeing as, um, you would, you were outlining in, in previous statements that, um, that when the, um, the, uh, the butt cheeks get widened, that it also expands the, um, the New World Order through quantum butt rape entanglement. So as the, as the rape widens the anus, also does the, the New World Order expand. Um, I... I'm curious as to, um, your take on, um, you know, what Sheriff Hot Pants Pedo Bear Scumbag was, was doing there, and, um, what you would say to him if, you know, you were able to say anything to him. So I'm just, just really curious as to your perspective there, Mr. Kissinger. I think it's a continuing process. I think it's past will be to develop an overall strategy. It's a great opportunity. Alrighty, well, I would like to take this great opportunity to point out the obvious and state that this whole thing was a comedy, it was fake, no one was actually interviewed, and if you think it was real, then you're an idiot. <sighs> that has to get me over my freaking video fear. The fact that I'm on a <laughs> webinar with all of you right now is, like, massive. Really? Well, I mean, it's all right. I mean, I think I do better when I'm actually talking with people. But if I have to sit there and look stupid in front of a camera by myself in a room and I'm just kind of like, uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> and then I think about being all ridiculous because I, like, think I need to be all professional and, you know. Nah, like, let's I, do that. Let's do this. Yeah, let's so do like, this. Just, just make the video. Just make the video. Just make a video. Just make a video. Okay, okay. I can make a video, and I can be totally insanely ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Let's right. play this. How much more ridiculous can we be? Uh, for, you know, compare it to each other and compare it every day, and put it on our blog post. <laughs> Cause that'll be fun. That'll be like, ah, oh, I got this thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get everybody with, ah, oh, you know, just do something crazy. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. We can, like my friend Dave likes to say, we can mix the serious with the silly. Yeah, yeah, we've got plenty of serious in this. What are you talking about? I gave like content galore for no reason. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you gave lots of information, lots of juicy information. Juicy. Um. You will find out it's a reflection of you If you always do what you've always done Expect the different results is kinda silly Scared of looking inside ourselves That we blame everybody But only when we can face ourselves Will we ever satisfy the need The need to be free the need to be free, the need to be free, integrate polarity. Welcome to the Matrix, Neo, you sense there's something wrong. Everything is backwards, it's upside down, as if we've been hit in the bomb. Society fills your head with bomb. It rides against your soul Every so-called authority Has been a huge major donkey You thought I was gonna say asshole, didn't ya? Free The need to be free The need to be free Integrate polarity 
It's fine to be an individual You should think for yourself Question absolutely everything Don't settle for what you're dealt Your mind is being programmed Whether you like it or not So who would you rather do it? You or some totalitarian twat? Wakey, wakey, sleeping people. You've slept in long enough, don't you think so? Coming, summer of 2012. Another analogy we have used with regard to the idea of the darkness the experience of the darkness you have created on your planet to give it a positive spin is what we have called the rubber band analogy. The idea of the degree to which you have chosen to experience limitation and darkness on your planet is actually a beautiful thing because the degree to which you experience the darkness is the degree to which you will also experience the light. The rubber band analogy is that the farther back you pull the rubber band into the darkness, when you finally decide to let go, that's how much farther and faster it will shoot on the other side because you're giving it all that momentum all that energy by pulling it so far back into the darkness so when you do reach critical mass and you do cross the threshold and you do finally let go after straining for so long to hold it back here in the darkness it will shoot very quickly onto the other side and go that much further into the light the ninth wave of unity consciousness has given us CMEs earthquakes Tsunamis and superstorms. But this time, it's personal. Alright, fair enough. But you see, the only reason it seems to be so difficult is because of what you define a habit to be. If I may be so bold, I would like to take an opportunity now to share with you our civilization's definition of a habit. May I? <laughs> well, actually, uh, we'd kind of rather you didn't. Why, thank you so very much. It's time for your evolution. Right now, 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 right now. And the SSANI ain't fucking around. This is an emergency distress message from the White House. Situation, urgent. Obama's butt is hurt. I repeat, President Obama's butt is hurt. The situation is critical. We expect very serious storms of crying and fits of tantrum and rage. This situation is urgent and we need backup. We have not been trained to handle this level of immaturity and bitching. Please, send assistance immediately. This is an extreme emergency situation. What was that? Johnny's left arm! Yes, really? That's a heck of a promo, promo there. <laughs> yes, what? Uh, listen to Journeys with Rebecca or Katie will zap you with her. Oh no. She's gonna get you if you don't watch JWR. She's gonna get you. You better tune in to Journeys with Rebecca. Serious with Rebecca.com or oh man, she's gonna mess you up. Oh, she's serious about this. You better listen. She's she's all serious. And, oh man, you don't want to get on her bad side. You better tune in if you know what's good for you. You are watching Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy Special Edition presentation designed for broadcasting on Conscious Consumer Network Independent TV. The special edition segments are meant to take the best of the best of Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy, mixing and mashing the clips and redesigning them into a brand new derivative work for the purpose of both informing you and entertaining you. Each show will also air on the PSEC Documentary YouTube channel one week after they are streamed on CCN. 
It is our intention to inspire others to view the negative as a positive opportunity for positive change, because without compassion in our actions, one is merely aware, but not necessarily awake. A platform of compassion and not falling for divide and conquer division tactics is the only way to bring in a new and better world that is not run by psychopaths. Speaking of psychopaths, we are here with Slick Willie, aka former President Bill Clinton. Mr. Clinton, has the rise of compassion within the human spirit caused any interference with your ability to rape women and molest children? And has this created any unforeseen phenomenon while you and your buddies worship that funky looking stone owl during your cremation of care ceremonies at Bohemian Grove? Well, Mr. Kelso, I tell you, this uh, new conscious energy has been uh, really hard on me and my wife, Hillary. Uh, it's making it very, very difficult for me to do my presidential ex-presidential uh, rape campaign. It's making it very difficult for me to keep it up anymore. i got to keep a uh, line of Viagra constantly flowing into my veins to get it up. I can't even rape children like I used to. I've partaken in a lot of crazy shenanigans over the years, but 2017 has been one triggering year for me and the old pig. I mean, Hillary, uh, my wife has become uglier and uglier and uglier. I have to put a bag over her head just to stick my slick in there. I'm afraid I might get diseased. After all, she's been on the campaign so long, she's starting to get AIDS or some sort of contraction of some sexual disease, that carpet munching pig. It just drives me nuts. My daughter, she's she's out banging more dicks than I know what to do with, including mine. <laughs> My buddy Dick Cheney. Mr. Speaker, the President of the United States. Mr. Speaker, members of Congress, Mom and Dad, last month a girl in Lincoln, Rhode Island, sent me a letter. It began, Dear George W. Bush, if there's anything you know, please send me a letter. P.S. Kiss my ass. Dick, 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 dick is a killer. It began the end of June in the Casablanca. Vice President Cheney, he showed the way. Terrified and innocent, the desire growing stronger, submitting to the whim of one brutal man. I feel free, I feel free, I feel free, I feel free. Dick, 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 dick is a killer. I feel free. Last August the 11th, on the deck of a carrier in the Pacific, I gave to you my complete commitment, and it is right. I love you, and I do not want to lose you. My purposes are just and true. Activity is increasing, and Dick is on the rise. By executive order, we're on the manhunt aboard the Starship Enterprise. The once all-powerful ruler of Iraq was found in a hole. President Clinton fucked it. True. President Clinton fucked it. Then farmer self the sorrow. Yes, farmer self the sorrow. I feel free. Farmer self the sorrow. And one reason is clear. Dick, 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 dick is a killer. 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 Dick, dick is a killer. Dick is a killer. Dick is a killer. Dick is a killer. Dick, 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 dick. Fuck yourself. Kiss my ass. And I want you. It's difficult to talk about. And I want you. Cause you set me free. And I want you. And I want you. And I want you just as surely as Dick is a killer. 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 Dick, 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 d
dick, 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 suck my dick, fuck my ass, dick is a killer, dick is a killer, dick is a killer, dick is a killer, dick, 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 dick is a killer, 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 fuck yourself, kiss my ass, I believe that God made me a woman. I feel it in my heart, and this bitch's voice must be heard. A sex change is the only certain way to preserve the sanctity of marriage. We are living in historic times. We are living in a time of great change. Our leadership and resolve can light the way for others. And having come this far, and in the unfolding of the years, this country has a new friend called Shirley W. Bush. Dick is a killer. Dick is a killer. Dick is a killer. Dick is a killer. Dick, 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 dick is a killer. 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 Dick, 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 dick is a killer. May God continue to bless America. Word. I feel free. I feel free. I feel free. I feel free. Dick, 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 dick is a killer. I feel free. Fuck it. Fuck it. We went out on a hunting act. On a, I mean, a hunting trip, not a hunting accident. He, he he has a tendency to have those every now and again out around the Bohemian go- Grove grounds. And uh, these energies have been so harsh that the gun accidentally malfired and shot my dick off, and I had to get surgery done. It's now this robotic uh, replacement now, and it, it uh, sometimes has an electronic spasm and goes out of control, and it, I just can't, I can't fucking stop it. It's like the Slick 5000, but as to the political stage, it's 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 very uh, it's very confusing. Vladimir makes fun of me. He likes to leave uh, uranium crusted uh, dog shit on my porch, yeah, and he likes to harass me and and, and make fun of me and, and laugh at me and tell me that I'm a loser that I lost the election and um, you know. He calls me a little bitch boy. It really hurts my feelings, and you know, I, I thought I was going to be able to, to rub it in his face. I was going to rub it in Putin's face. I'm, I'm really triggered. These energies are really triggered. But it's not fair. It's not fair. My wife should have been the president, Madam President. I should have been the first man. I mean first bitch I mean I mean the first whore I mean the, yeah the first man I want to be screwing interns again not even a not even a, a, a drip of Viagra of, of IV can, can help me anymore I can't I, I'm just I'm just losing my mind it's just getting crazy for me I just can't do it I feel like I'm going insane like like my body's corroding and collapsing on me uh, I just, I just can't, I just can't do it. I, I, now I'm on, now I'm on. Oh my God! I think he's dead. Dave, I think you killed Clinton. So much for a new world order, but uh, based on what he was describing, sounds like maybe there's a bit of new world odor going on. His corpse looks like a bag of odors and tricks. Yeesh. Gonna have to clean that shit up. Oh, and now it's leaking Viagra-encrusted diarrhea all over my floor. Oh. <laughs> I'm shit in educational comedy. Situational comedy. Yeah, well, there there you have it, folks. Um, the rise of, of compassion is just... Uh, Taking taking those psychopaths and just they're just becoming triggered little zombies that are just yeah. Uh, although don't worry, we'll be we'll be seeing Bill again. I'm I'm sure they got a got a clone of him in the frozen locker, you know, someplace. Uh, or so they say. <laughs> Take it out control, it's your heart and soul. 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 It's your he